The Jets winning streak continues. The Jets improve to five and two. Here are my top five takeaways from week seven. Welcome to Jets Talk. My name's Ryan. I'll be your pilot. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. Boys and girls, the Jets improve to 5-2. and two. It's a four-game win streak. That is four in a row. Four on the road on the season. 5-2. and two. We're heading into Patriots week coming up here on a nice little win streak. So this is kind of nice. Uh, tough game in Denver. Going to be a lot to go over. Not a whole lot of good aside from winning, uh, but some things we can work on, things we can move forward with uh, going forward here. So let's jump right into my top five takeaways. The number one takeaway for me is our kicking situation. Both Braden Man and Greg Zerline both had themselves a pretty good day. Braden Man, I think, was like 40 or 54 yards per punt. He had one booming punt uh, and one that wound up going out at the one yard line thanks to Eccles recovering it. Really, really good from him. Zerline goes three of three on kicks, winds up making his extra point as well. He had a long of 45 yards. The Jets needed special teams this week, just like they have the last few weeks, and the Jets have gotten their kicker right, it feels like. Zerline, Greg at the leg, Legatron. Um, yeah, no, I like this. This is this is good. It's nice to at least feel like we're kind of confident, especially since the Broncos kicker, Brandon McManus, missed an extra point and missed a field goal. So, like, as I'm watching, like, the wind, they're talking about how they had to, like, adjust the um, the the uprights and, and move them around because they were getting bent and blown around and everything. The fact that he was able to make as many kicks as he did, you know, saved us this game, 110%. So good looks uh, for special teams. This is like multiple weeks in a row now. So good job, Brant Boyer. Uh, next up, I want to talk about Zach Wilson. He had himself a little bit of a rough day. Now, he was without a lot of help. He finishes the day 16 of 26. That's 61% completion percentage, 121 yards. I want to see Zach go off. And I understand this is not the game to expect Zach to go off on because this is a number one ranked Broncos defense, a very stout uh, secondary for the Broncos. So it's not overly, overly concerning, not to mention, as we'll get into here in just a little bit, Zach was without a lot of help on the offensive side. But man, I really want to see him kind of take over a game. I want to be able to see him lift us up. Uh, it was rumored, or maybe not rumored, but it was said at in the game, when he lost so many starters, he got everyone in the huddle, said, next man up, grow a pair. Love it. <laughs> Do love that. The guy seems like he's oozing leadership this year. Uh, so hopefully this continues to grow and maybe we start to see a little bit better stat line here. But big important thing, Zach is undefeated since he has returned. Uh, this is going to be the big topic for today. We're talking injuries. I want to get to these two, then we'll get to the big one. Uh, Corey Davis goes down with what they believe to be an MCL injury to his knee. Uh, Robert Sell does not believe it's going to be a long-term impact. He might miss a little bit of time here. Elijah Vera Tucker goes down with an elbow injury. He comes out of the game. They're going to evaluate him tomorrow. We don't know the severity of that injury. Hopefully both these guys are good. The offensive line brutal today. The The Denver Broncos defense is stout, but man, Dwayne Brown had himself a horrible game. I think he had like three or four penalties. Herbig had himself a few penalties. Like this offensive line got abused by a really good Broncos defense. On the wide receiver front, Corey Davis, you know, obviously getting him knocked out of the game was not good. He's arguably Zach's favorite target to go to. He seems to look for him anytime he's in any kind of jam. You're already without Elijah Moore because of all the situation that happened that, you know, three, four days ago. And then obviously, you know, this next one here, not, not really great. Um, and this one's, this is the scary one for me. This is Brees Hall. This is going to be the big, 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 big takeaway from today's game. He goes down with a knee injury when he got hit on the play that he got injured on. I'm looking at it. I'm thinking this dude got hit in the head. He's going into the concussion protocol. He's going to get pulled from the game, but he'll be fine. It wasn't a bad shot. He was walking around you know, they, they put him on the cart for, you know, just so he's not woozy and he goes out. They come back a little bit later and they say, Brees Hall ruled out with a knee injury. Oh no, that's weird. Didn't see the knee. All right, whatever. Probably just a little banged up. Rest him, totally fine. We find out the fear right now is that he has a torn ACL. Now I was looking at a uh, Fantasy Doctors uh, YouTube page. They had a video that was released right after the injury occurred and he said 
I believe this, you know, ACL tear would be uh, an odd tear based on the video footage. Now, Robert Sala came out and said the fear is ACL. So like, that's the big one. I'm hoping, praying that maybe we get a bone bruise or, or a sprain or something like that. And it's not the ACL, but dude, Brees Hall was on a tear for with 80 carries. He had like 400 some odd yards. That was the best start to any career for the New York Jets. If this is in fact an ACL tear, um, it's just, it's a, it's a shot to the gut for Jet fans. It, it really is. And I just hope the, the guy's going to be all right. Now, he tweeted out after the game, resilient, through all the trials and tribulations, Jets win, let's fucking go. This is a leader. He's not talking about his busted up knee. He's, you know, oh, my contract, oh, this, my touches, all this other stuff. No, he's about the team, even in a bad situation. So I love me some Brees Hall. Dude, I hope you're all right. But dude, this is this is next man up. This is how the NFL works. There are a lot of injuries throughout the entirety of the season, and you have to try and get better or at least get through each and every one. There's going to be a lot of people talking and speculating, hey, the trade deadline's coming up. Cam Akers is available. Uh, Robinson down in Jacksonville is available. Maybe Kareem Hunt in, in um, Cleveland could be an option. A few other guys, Pollard down in Dallas. I'm not one to want to trade for a running back. One, because we have two good backs. Brees is going to be back next year. I'm not overly concerned about that just yet. And like, I don't want to give up, you know, extra picks and, and other stuff. Like we got guys that we want to, you know, get touches for anyway. And the main reason I don't want to trade for someone is because of this guy, Michael Carter. I wanted him to be our running back one going into the draft stunned that we wound up drafting Brees Hall in the second round. I did not think that was going to happen. It wasn't something I really wanted to have happen, to be perfectly honest. Michael Carter finished the day today, 13 rushes, 29 yards, 2.2 yards per carry. Not the best, but he did have two receptions, 45 yards, 22.5 yards per reception. He had one really big reception that helped the Jets out in a major way. And this guy just knows how to produce. And it seems like he is the vocal leader on this team. As long as this dude's in the backfield, you know, as much as it sucks to lose Brees Hall, just an incredible talent, Michael Carter could start on other teams. And I do think the Jets wind up bringing in Bam Knight or some of the other guys that they have, you know, in, in the stables. And I think they try to utilize that a little bit more. But Michael Carter in the passing game, in the blocking game, in the running game, this guy is a weapon. 100%. It seems like Zach Wilson is pretty comfortable with him as well. And it just feels like he's trying to go 100% all the time. Not that like other guys don't necessarily feel that, but like maybe it's because he's a little bit smaller. Maybe it's because he's a little bit shiftier. He just feels like he's tough to tackle and just hard to, to kind of get a read on for the defense. I love me some Michael Carter. This dude is going to step up. I'm concerned <laughs> about how this offense is going to look. I'm not going to lie. I'm, wa I'm sitting here, I'm watching Zach. I'd be lying if I if I didn't say I wasn't, you know, a little concerned based on what we saw the last few weeks. But then I think, you know what? Tough defenses. Last two weeks, let's go into this Patriot game. Let's stop all the, the, the doom and gloom. We got this. We're five and two. We're riding high. Elijah Moore, this one's for you. You wanted your touches. You want to have an opportunity to make your name, to really impact this team, to help out your teammates. If you want to re if you want to come back and you want to show these guys what you're about, that you're actually a team player, not demanding a trade, and that was just some flash in the pan thing. You come back, you get to work, and you do whatever the team asks of you. This is absolutely going to be a, a struggle for, I shouldn't say a struggle, but it's going to be a test for the New York Jets these next two weeks. You got New England, then you got Buffalo, then you got the bye week. So you got a little bit of time to reset, but then you're going right back to New England right after the bye. This is going to be fascinating to me. I'm genuinely interested to see how the Jets wind up overcoming some of these hurdles. Hopefully AVT and Corey Davis can get back on the field pretty quickly. And hopefully the best case scenario for Brees Hall is not the ACL tear. I'm holding my breath. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What were your top five takeaways from today's game? And as always, go Jets.